but I'm getting the feeling, no, I know. I know this is gonna be a love triangle. And there were a few parts in the beginning, I would say maybe the first half where I was a little bored, but I love her. She's a queen too. That was laugh out loud funny. Okay, it is time to read Throne of Glass. The time has come. I am so excited to get into this story and to get to know all of these characters that are so raved about. And I'm also excited to compare my feelings to this series with my feelings for Akotar. I know it's heavily debated which one is better and I'm excited to dive into it. I don't know much about this series. All I know is the premise of the book right which is what's on the back and I know some couples that get together thanks to Instagram and fan art yeah I'm like really looking forward to this I just got off my once upon a broken heart series and go check out my reading vlog to see how I feel about it but let me give you a hint I loved it and it was it's my new favorite series so um this one I'm excited I'm hoping that it'll help me with <laughs> My Once Upon a Broken Heart withdrawal. <laughs> so I'm hoping it'll get me out of my funk because I'm feeling a little down when it, since I had to say goodbye to those characters in that world. So I'm ready for another world to captivate me and what better world than Sarah J. Mass's worlds, right? So I'm super excited to get into it. And yeah, so let's go ahead and start reading. Let's stop talking and start reading. That's what we're here for. <laughs> to read she's fascinated with this library that has over a million copies of books Cole asked her you like to read and she raised an eyebrow and said don't you same girl <laughs> I didn't finish. I just got to chapter 14, page 104. So I read 50 more pages. And it's getting better. It's picking up. The The second 50 pages were better than the first 50 pages. So um, the competition has started. Well, like they're training. Um, so it's getting good. We're meeting new characters. I'm liking it. I'm enjoying Cole. I need to look up how to say his name because I don't think it's Cole, but Cole and Selena have an interesting dynamic and it's kind of funny watching them interact. So I'm enjoying that. And we're not getting much of Prince Dorian. Well, at least we did it in those second 50 pages. He just seems like a flirt. And if he ever is going to get with a girl, he would need a girl to call him out on his crap and put him in his place and make him work for it because he gets girls way too easily. So Cole's an interesting character. I just like him as a character and I don't mind Prince Dorian as a character. He just is a prince and he's a flirt and you know, need I say more? But anyways, we also get introduced to another character named ne Nehem. I feel like I'm pronouncing all these names wrong and it feels terrible, but Nehemiah. Nehemiah. And she's a princess from somewhere in this world. She speaks some other language. It's called Ailway. 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 I don't know if I'm saying that right either. Selena knew the language and so they were talking and. Anyways, the princess, all I have to say is that the princess was likable. She's also an interesting character that's been added to the story, and so the bits of her were interesting. We're getting to know Selena a bit more, and I like her a lot. I mean, I like her so far. Some comments that she says are very relatable, and I just like the details of getting to know her. I'm excited to get to know her even more and more about her past. And I'm enjoying it now. The first 50 pages, I honestly wasn't, but I am now. 
So that's the thing with fantasy books. You just gotta be patient. You just gotta get through it. And then oh, you reap the benefits, man. It's, it's worth it, so. going to be a problem. You know, there's something about Sarah J. Mass's writing that I love. It's the pacing of relationships in books, and I'm not talking just like romantic relationships, but also just like friendships and just relationships being built they're always at a reasonable believable pace and it just it feels so real so realistic and not only just the progression of relationships that i like from sarah g master's writing but also the dynamic in relationships she is so good at making relationships between characters so unique I mean, just like Akotar, this book has just great world building. I understand everything. There's nothing is hard to read. It's it's going at a good steady pace. It's um, not super fast pace, but not a slow pace either. And I really like Kaol as a character. I didn't think I was going to, but I do. I don't know. He just makes the book really entertaining for me. I'm just really starting to enjoy this book. So. this was a spoilers video because I have so much I want to say oh my gosh I look so funny right now <laughs> but I'm getting the feeling no I know I know this is gonna be a love triangle that is not a spoiler but I will put a disclaimer at the beginning of the video that if you want to know absolutely nothing zero about this book that you shouldn't watch this video because obviously I'm gonna talk about a few things I won't say with who. It could be anyone. Okay, actually, I'm gonna do a spoiler section at the end of this video because I have so much I wanna talk about right now. to know more of Selena's skills and what she can do and why she was the best assassin and she's a baddie y'all what can I say she's really cool I just feel like this book is very much setting up the entire series this book is more so about getting to know these three characters Selena, Kale, and Dorian and a little bit of Princess Nehemia I just feel like we're, we're more setting stuff up, but it's still an entertaining story enough to get you through the series setup, if that makes sense. I don't know if I'm making any sense. <laughs>
enjoyed that. The last 100 pages were fire. I couldn't put it down. Okay, four out of five stars. Okay, I enjoyed this. By the last 100 pages, I could not put this down. How is it that despite these characters being a stereotypical cliche, and yet I loved them? There's the narcissistic prince. There's the oppressed heroine with a shady background. The wicked king, scared of magic. The hardcore right hand of the narcissistic prince. The misogynistic brute. But as the plot developed, I started liking the hardcore bodyguard with the name of Kaol, the narcissistic prince with the flirty nature, but with a real love for knowledge. This oppressed heroine, which made a name for herself, but preferred to use it just to cover herself because that was a choice she could make. You fall in love with all of these characters. They're all so likable. You start off thinking you're, they're a cliche, and maybe they are, but Sarah J Maas makes them her own, and they're all very, very likable, even just with the first book. Selena is a baddie. I love that she is not our typical main girl. Kaol and Dorian are both so likable in their own ways. Nehemiah is the best friend every girl wants. Loyal, strong, bold, and kind-hearted. To be completely honest, the most beautiful relationship in this book is Selena and Princess Nehemiah. Their friendship is so pure, y'all, and so natural that it seems like their souls have been friends since the moment the world was created. You know when like you meet someone and y'all like instantly jive and y'all just connect on a whole nother level and you're like, it's like we were made to be friends. That's how I feel about Nehemiah and Selena and I love it. I will be rooting for them 100% till the end of this series. I love them. I like that Sarah J Maas found a way to make Selena not only a baddie that you don't want to mess with, but also very feminine. Sarah J Maas finds a way to remind us throughout the book that yes, Selena is a trained assassin, but she is also just a 17 year old girl. The, I really, really, really enjoyed the banter between Selena and Kaol. The Dorian moments weren't bad either. They had cute moments, I love them. And I don't mind love triangles when they are convincing and when both candidates for our main character's heart are on equal footing. So there's some tension and you don't know who she's gonna end up with. Those are the type of love triangles that I like and that I'm here for. The beginning of this book was a bit slow for me and there were a few parts in the beginning, I would say maybe the first half where I was a little bored but as the plot develops, the storyline becomes more and more intriguing until it reaches a point where things turn out crazy and fantastic. What seemed to me at the beginning as okay-ish turned out to be, towards the end, a great imaginative story. The competition aspect of this book definitely got me through the boring parts because it made it more interesting and then also getting to know the characters as well. I just know that this story is going to get better and better with each book. The ending of this book makes me think that the next one, Crown of the Night, is going to be so much more action packed, so fast paced, and I cannot wait. I think you'll enjoy this book if you know what you are getting into, which is it's not high fantasy, not mind blowing, but it's entertaining with likable characters and the ending makes it worth it, if that makes sense. <laughs> all in all, I don't wanna say too much because I just want you to dive into this book and just get started and get going. So curious to see like what other people think, so I'm gonna go right now and look at all the reviews on Goodreads because I just wanna see people's opinions on this book. Anyways, y'all, I think that this is a good read. I think it's a solid four stars and I think that you should just go pick it up and read it for yourself. I am hoping there's going to be more fantasy magic aspects or fantasy magic elements implemented in this story going forward. And I'm hoping for some more character development, which knowing Sarah J Maas, there will be. And I'm just super excited and intrigued to continue this series. So despite this book not being mind blowing for me, it's good enough to make me excited to start the next book. And like I said, the last hundred pages could not put it down. Anyways, y'all, I recommend this book and 
keep watching if you want to see all my spoiler discussion comments. Yeah, I talk about my feelings a little bit more in depth and keep watching if you want to see that. But if you are not gonna watch the spoiler section, then thank you so much for watching if you made it this far. And I will see you guys next time when I am probably reading Crown of Midnight. So anyways, y'all, bye. Can we talk about how Kale, I was gonna say Kale, Kale, got her a ring from that party and went and gave it to her that night. He likes her. I knew it, y'all. I could feel it. I could feel it. They were, they're spending so much time together. It's bound to happen. She commented that he looked handsome one day. So she's starting to like see that he's a cutie. And they're like, they spend every meal together. They train together. They run every morning. Like this was bound to happen, y'all. Prince Dorian will of how handsome she describes him can you blame her so she has an attraction to dorian and dorian obviously has an attraction to selena because he's like the first girl in a long time that hasn't that doesn't bore him that keeps things interesting so he's infatuated with her so that is the love triangle y'all i'm interested to see how that's gonna play out because like, is she gonna date one and then date the next one and then get with Rowan later on? Also, she talked about a guy in her past named Sam. There's a lot of hurt there. Someone she actually loved, another assassin. And I guess he was betrayed and killed. And that part made me really sad. Okay, don't get me wrong. The Dorian Selena vibes are like, they give me butterflies, they make me giggle. I like the vibe, especially because the way he's described, like, we know this man's a cutie. But for some reason I have this weird pull towards Kale, and I don't know why, he's got like this mysterious vibe about him and I just want to like peel off all the layers and get to know him at his heart, at his core, and his soul. I'm a little infatuated with him, I don't know why. I'm not necessarily Team Dorian or Team Kale, I'm kind of just like enjoying the ride, you know, like I don't really care who she gets with because I know neither of them are in game. So why get serious about it, you know? I like how Sarah J Mass tends to do this. She, her books are never from what I've seen on Aquatar and now this. The main, her main girl never like meets her guy and gets with him. It's always a journey. Like she, this Selena had Sam and I guess she's gonna have either Dorian or Kale or both before she gets with her mate. And in Aquatar, Faye had her guy in her village, I forgot his name, he was Zatarello, I don't remember his name, then Tamlin, and then her mate, Reese. So I kind of like how she does that, it changes things up from your typical book of main girl meets main boy get together, you know? And I like too that these characters, Kaol and Dorian, despite them not being Selena's endgame, either of them, like they still seem like they're going to be main characters throughout the series and I like that. What's the deal with Prince Dorian's obsession with these pups? Like <laughs> these pups keep coming up and Selena was like what's wrong and he was like he put his head in his hand and he was like oh my pups like my dogs they were bred as mutts they're not purebred and he was like acting like this was the biggest deal ever and I'm like what is the issue here? Like, if this is all you have to worry about, dude, you are not busy enough. I love Dorian and I love Selena as characters, but I just don't feel that heat when they're together. Like, you know when you're reading about a book couple and you're just obsessed and you feel the tension and you feel the chemistry. I'm not feeling anything. Obviously have a good rapport and obviously get along well and have a lot in common. So I feel it actually more with Kale, which is weird. I'm more rooting for that because even though I know, I know they're not endgame, but I feel it more with them and I could see that happen more. I see Dorian and Selena more as friends. I really like Kale more than I thought I was going to. Kale offered his sword to Selena. To Selena. Why did that, why did that make me like him more? He obviously is trusting her. Like 
This is his blade. His sword is like his loyalty to the king, right? They have come such a long way from the beginning. Oh. I really like Kale, y'all. Don't get me wrong, Dorian and Selena are cute. Dorian's a cutie. Selena's my queen. But there's this vibe I get from Kale and Selena that I'm just drawn to more. Um, Selena dumped Dorian because it would be hard as the king's assassin to date the prince, but honestly, if she truly felt like loved him and felt the same way he felt for her, she would have tried to make it work. I think in all honesty, she just wasn't feeling it enough to risk it. It just wasn't worth the biscuit. So now that Dorian is kind of pushed aside, bless his heart, we love him, and I can't wait to see his character grow. I feel like there's so much potential for character development there and I know Sarah J Mass is gonna do well with that. She is a queen at world building and character development. I can obviously tell she's making room for Kale. Now, I know they're not in game, but I'm gonna enjoy this y'all because something about Kale and Selena, it just hits. It works for me. I'm here for it. He really does care for her. Like him killing Kane, y'all was huge for him. I just feel like Kale was all about rules and all about order and it was on instinct to do this and I think he's freaking out with the fact that he just there was no question about it he was gonna kill Kane. he was not gonna let harm come to Selena. There's a lot of potential for his character too I'm excited to see where what his journey is gonna be like and Kale I think is honestly my favorite character right now I know we haven't met nearly half of the characters that are introduced in this series and I can say that based off of all I'll see like fan art portraits of characters and the caption will say Throne of Glass. I'm like, oh my gosh, there are so many characters in this series, but I'm here for it. So I know we haven't met a bunch of them, but right now, Kale is my fave. I mean, Selena is my queen and I love Nehemiah, but that's what's making me want to read the next book is how much I like all these characters and I like this world too. Yeah, Sarah J Mass's writing is just spectacular. Her creativity is insane. Such a great read. I recommend. That's all I have to say. Mm -hmm.